Good evening. I want to know who, who made all the money off of this stuff? Because I haven't received the check since I've been back here in Knoxville. Somebody did, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I, I'm, I'm really happy to be here with you guys tonight. I, I know you want to ask me a lot of questions about what's going on, and we're going to get to that. I just want to let the people that don't really know who I am just know a little bit about me. I've, uh, I was born in Huntsville, Alabama. That's not so bad. Mom, mom uh, my dad was a high school coach. And back in those days, you, you coached all three. That's why they just said, you're the coach, football, basketball, baseball. And that's what he did. My mother was, uh, worked at Marshall Space Flight Center. And she was Dr. Warner Von Braun's secretary. And uh, I used to crawl around over there. all the, And I never could understand why all these rockets and stuff were everywhere. But uh, that's, that's basically what she did. That we, we went to the moon and come to find out it was her boss that was in charge. So, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was having fun. But uh, after uh, a good stint in high school, I enjoyed high school at Lee High School, but uh, I, I, I got into the recruiting game and I kind of found out real quick, you got to grow up and you got to man up and do what you got to do. Because there was a lot of pressure put on my parents. They, they didn't think I knew it, but you know, you're, you're an Alabama boy, you're supposed to go to Alabama or Auburn. Don't you dare think about going to Tennessee. I mean, how can that be? But uh, I, had a, I had a pretty good guy to persuade me. Coach Bill Battle was, uh, got to know my mom and dad pretty good, and I, he was the guy that I liked. Coach Brian and I had a really good relationship. Because, believe it or not, if I didn't go to Tennessee, I probably would have gone to Alabama over Auburn because of the relationship we had. And, you know, people ask me, so what, what do you mean? They, they had, to, there were a lot of problems in Alabama. Well, there was problems with the governor, George Wallace. There wasn't problems in Alabama. That, that's the way, he's the one that stood up and said segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. That wasn't Bear Bryant. That wasn't even Shug Jordan. So, uh, you know, they, a lot of things got misconstrued, but anyway, I think I went to the right place. That's all I'm trying to tell you with all this stuff. <laughs> and, um, and I'm glad to be here with you today. Uh, I really want to answer what you want to ask. So are we about ready for questions? No? I still need to talk some more? Really? No questions? I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who did I look up to? Well, and I've been asked this question. That's a very good question. I've been asked that question many times, and everybody gets shocked when I give them my answer. My parents, my mom and my dad. And, you know, and if I had to pick a, a, a player, it'd be Willie Mays. But, that never, when I get asked that question, my mom and dad always pop up because there's no way I'm here today without them. Okay? All right. Hey, buddy. No, please. He should come up here. <laughs> yeah. The uh, question was, what are, what are my thoughts on Coach Pruitt? He is exactly what we need, without a doubt. And, and if you talk to any of the players and they're whining about the coach does, he's a football coach. You're on a merry-go-round the last four years. I mean, you're, yeah. hey, I have nothing against the people in charge, but didn't we play the MAC teams for homecoming? So what are they doing coaching our team? That shouldn't be. That's just my thought, but whatever. The MAC, God Almighty. Uh, don't get me started on that. But uh, that, that's the way I feel about that. But uh, yes, sir. Uh, 
No, sir, I was not shielded from the press. I did not talk to the press, and I still don't talk to the press. <laughs> that's why I, I can, you know, that's, that's just been it. I don't, I have nothing. I, I, my attitude was, if you don't practice like I practice and play like I play, don't question what I do. So, that's the way I've been all my life, and it ain't gonna change. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, let me tell you something, sir. I, thank you very much. Well, no, I wasn't. I had a lot of good players around me, too. Hey, thank you very much. And uh, I'm a Peyton Manning fan, too. But T. Martin won the national championship. <laughs> Let's get that out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I didn't pick football. My mother did. <laughs> if I'd have been 18 years old, <laughs> I'd be speaking French now. <laughs> I've been up in Montreal and, because I really wanted to play baseball. And the, the kick, uh, kick the, the, the determining factor was the fact that Coach Battle came out and said on the first recruiting day, Condridge, if you're good enough to play baseball, you can play baseball and football at Tennessee. You don't have to go through spring practice. Well. That's the way that worked. So, of course, a lot of my teammates were a little upset with me, but all I told them was, get better at baseball. <laughs> so, that's kind of how that went. Come on, guys. Yeah. Yes, sir. What kind of job do you think Coach Fulmer's doing? What kind of job do I think Coach Fulmer's doing? <laughs> Excellent. Because he's, he, he's, remember, he spent a little time up in the, the president's office, learning about the administrative part and how it goes down, and he saw all the, all the orders that were handed down and whatever happened there. Then he comes as athletic director. He'd been there before and won a national championship. And if he picked Jeremy, he picked the best coach that was available. And they get along. Imagine how that is. That's like talking to another coach at a coach's convention, go and talk to your athletic director. So that works out really well. So, like I always say, telling those players, you don't have, if you don't like something and you go talk to Philip, eh. If you don't like something, you go talk to Jeremy, eh. So play better. That's all you got. Or quit one or the other. And believe me, some of them, they're trying to get to quit. <laughs> Open up that scholarship for a good player to come in that didn't play in the MAC. Am I lying? Okay, I, I just want to check. I'm not telling anything but the truth here. They're not all, not all of those players, but some of them. Yes, yes, sir. Well, playing for Coach Battle was very special because under that nice coiffed hair and a nice looking guy and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> he had a Bear Bryant side to him that was on the football field was nothing but determination and making sure you do your job. And he didn't care if you were friends or not, uh, but you know, off the field he might do what he had to do. But when you're on that field, you did what he told you, him and his coaches told you to do. And he had a coaching staff, well, in particular, Ray Trail, Gary Wyatt. I mean, those guys were, they, were, they should have been head coaches during that time. But we had, we had a group of coaches that were adamant about being precise, doing exactly what you need to do, and don't talk back. Don't, I don't want to hear your opinion. You do what I tell you to do, and we'll win games. And that's the way it was. And everybody bought in. So that was, it was a good time for me. I enjoyed being there. How large a family do you have? But I've got a 28-year-old daughter and an 18-year-old son and a wife <laughs> from Meigs County. So you know I'm straight. <laughs> Anybody here from Meigs County? 
Well, you, but you know where that is, though, don't you? <laughs> yeah. My wife, Courtney, is from Mays County, and she don't take any mess. Does your son play football? Yes, ma'am. He played his last game. Uh, they, they got in the playoffs, and they were – he said Beard got in the playoffs, and, you know, it, it was rah-rah. It was great. They, they had a good season. The only bad thing is when you just barely get in the playoffs, you play the first team in that – league and that was Marable. <laughs> so they're not playing anymore. <laughs> but he had a good he had a good four years and three years and uh, he enjoyed it and he's ready to go to UT and study. Yes sir. What what do you think what, what do I think the qualities of a good athletic player is? Okay. That's a fair question. Well, you've got to be able to listen and comprehend. And a lot of people think, well, no, it's, it's all my talent. Well, that's, that's part of it. There's a lot of talented players that aren't playing pro football. There's a lot of talented players that aren't playing high school football because they let their mouth get in the way of their talent. And the fact that you would ask that question, I can tell you're a pretty conscientious player. So I think you should just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I like that. Okay? All right. Conrad, overall leadership's been an obvious issue for the last decade at UT. So we've got the right coach, hopefully. Uh, we've got a great athletic director. What's the overall <laughs> on the way up big time because, uh, like I said, it, it takes a while to replace players. It's, it's not like the pros where you just cut them and pay somebody else to come play. You have to, at least we don't have to wait four years, you gotta wait a year though. And then you've gotta recruit and you've gotta bring them in and you gotta ease them in and you just gotta build it. It's gonna, it's gonna take a little bit, but it's not gonna take as long as I think it would have if we hadn't made a change. Because it was uh, it was different, a little different. Yes, sir. Well, I don't know what they sell. I I, I don't have anything to do with that. Well. I understand what you're trying to get me to say, but I'm, I'll be speaking out of turn. Really, I'm, I'm serious. I deal with the guys that are already out of school and not playing anymore, and I'm very open and honest with them. I can tell you from knowing Coach Fulmer, it's going to be at the highest level of whatever they do, and discipline is not going to be in question at all because he is a no-nonsense guy. And I don't think he would hire a coach that wasn't. But just knowing Jeremy the way I do so far, <laughs> he's just like Philip. <laughs> First of all, listen right there to start with. But when you do go to college, there's, there's, it's probably one of the first times that you'll ever be on your own and making decisions that are going to directly affect you and only you. And you're in control of whether you do the right thing or you don't. Sounds like you've been taught how to do the right things, but there are people at college that'll be your buddies that always want to go do something else. You've got to be strong enough to stand up and tell them, not for me. You have your fun, I'll come visit you in jail, but not for me. <laughs> okay? Yes, sir. Uh, what was your relationship with John Ward? What was my relationship with John Ward? It was one of the better relationships that I had at UT. John Ward is a, was, a, was a guy that, from, from listening to him announce and do all the stuff, you, th you would think he was an outgoing person, and he, everybody he saw was like, hello, how you doing? I'm John Ward. Welcome to UT football, blah, 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 blah. 
the guy never said a word if you knew him off the field. You had to go up and say, hi, Mr. Ward, how are you doing? It's good to see you. How are you? And he'd go on. And I expected him to sit and talk all the time. He, he wasn't like that. He wouldn't get in anybody's business. Now, if you honestly sat down with him and asked him a question, then you're in for a sermon. <laughs> but, but it was good. It was something that you'd like to hear. But that's the kind of guy he was. I thought it, I thought it was Shira. John Shira. Okay. And there was this big deal about the Heisman Trophy and all that stuff. And not, not on our side of the ball, on their side of the ball. So he was going to come in and, and show everybody why he was a Heisman contender. <clears throat> They changed that word to pretender after that game. <laughs> we got after him like no other. It was, it was ugly for him. And I mean, we, the way the game went, that's fine, but he didn't have a good day. And, and the lesson from that, youngsters, don't upset your, your foe when you, before you play him. You can talk all you want after the game, but before the game kind of downplay it, and if you can, can stomach it, Praise them a little bit, you know. You know, you, he, they're the best. Never seen anybody better. <clears throat> yeah. Hello. We good? All right. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here.